question for you. If you are a young entrepreneur looking to start a car company in a country that doesn't exactly have the richest automotive history, how would you get people to take you seriously? Well, in the case of Geely, a company which, under the watchful eye of its visionary leader, went from manufacturing refrigerator parts to producing some of the most anticipated new energy vehicles of the present day. In just 35 years, it certainly helps if you casually add one of Europe's most iconic luxury car brands to your ever-growing portfolio. Win the World Touring Car Championship three years in a row and set your sights far beyond the confines of this rock we call home. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. In this video, we will have plenty of time to discuss all the crazy things that Geely has planned for the future and what that might mean for a consumer like you or me, no matter where you live. First, however, I want to take you way back, long before the era of towering HQs and powerful production lines. This is Luchao, just a regular old little town in rural China that just so happens to be the unlikely birthplace of this story's protagonist. In 1963, Eric Lee entered this world. During his early years, he lived a pretty ordinary life. When he wasn't helping out on the family farm, he was hustling for a few extra cents by watching over the neighbor's cows or giving people lifts on the family bicycle. But apart from the odd bit of wheeling and dealing, there were few signs that he would go on to be one of the true visionaries of China's industrial age. All that changed, however, when he discovered photography, of all things. Upon graduating high school, he needed a photo for his diploma and was less than impressed by the long queues and poor service he encountered at the studio in his nearest town. Sensing an opportunity, he borrowed the equivalent of a few months' wages from his father and bought himself a camera. He cycled from village to village taking portraits of the locals under the motto, don't like it, don't pay for it. This saved them the costly trip into town and quickly earned him the money to pay back his father and open his own photography studio. His own early flirtations with entrepreneurship coincided nicely with China's policy of economic reform, in which free enterprise was increasingly championed by the country's leadership. Now that the young Eric needed the encouragement, ever the problem solver, his quest to find cheaper chemicals for the film development process led to him stripping apart old fridges. Which in turn led to a business recycling precious metals and then ultimately gave him the experience to start manufacturing refrigerator components of his own. As China's economy started kicking into gear, demand for home appliances soared among the country's increasingly wealthy population. He rode the wave and before the end of the 80s began making fridges of his own and supplying refrigerator parts to brands such as Mitsubishi and Hitachi. But due to their simplicity, the designs he created were easily replicated by copycat companies. So he decided to look around for a new challenge. His light bulb moment came when one of his employees had a near-death motorcycle collision. After salvaging the remains of the bike and studying its inner workings, he realized he could easily replicate it with the tools he already had at his disposal. And he did just that. By 1994, the year his bikes were finally ready, China was in the midst of a motorization boom as people swapped out their trusty bicycles of before for shiny new mopeds. Retailing at half the price of their imported counterpart, his bikes were a big hit, but his mind was already wondering. Isn't a car just a bike with more wheels, he pondered? I've never made a car myself, but I imagine there's slightly more to it than that. In short, he bought a Mercedes, went on a business trip and returned to find it disassembled on the factory floor. But rather than being angry at his engineer's inability to piece it back together, he rewarded their curiosity by buying them a whole fleet of cars for them to tinker with until they had the knowledge needed to produce a car of their own. 
The culmination of their efforts and no doubt a fair amount of personal investment on Eric's part was the e how, meaning number one. But despite looking the part, it was riddled with safety issues and was destined for the scrap heap. But Lee's team was unfazed and resolved to try again. This time, wisely aiming to build an affordable hatchback style car. By the end of 1998, their efforts resulted in a production run of a hundred handmade Geely Haochings, which closely resembled a certain small Japanese car that was very popular in China at the time. Another valiant effort, but one that again ended in failure. The bodywork was leaky and the footwells flooded in the rain. Eric's solution was simple, if not a little barbaric. He hired a road roller and crushed them all. Surely this was the end of his ill-fated car experiment. Well, no. In true Eric fashion, he demanded his team give it one more shot. But would they follow him? Joining me today is one of his longest serving employees to tell me exactly what it was like at that crazy time. Chubian 当时的一些媒体啊一些什么的就是说对我们吉利造车都是充满了质疑的就是觉得呀于舒服董事长竟然有这么神奇的想法其实造车是一种梦想他就是说我们如何去实现这个伟大的梦想那肯定要是大家去
here's someone who can tell that story a whole lot better than me. Well, I remember the first time I was introduced to, to Geely, that was at the Detroit Auto Show in January 2008. Geely was there with one car, it was not impressive, and if anyone had told me at that time that this company will acquire Volvo cars in two years' time, and you couldn't imagine that. After the financial crisis, uh, the automotive industry was in big difficulties, and that's true for Volvo as well. Yeah, we were informed by the Ford leadership that Volvo was up for sale. Geely was the preferred buyer of Volvo cars. Well, there were questions about if Geely was the right buyer. Geely as a company and from a term of technology, what could they really offer? Of course, that perspective changed over the years. First time when we met with Eric Lee in Gothenburg in 2010, he made a very famous statement and he said that let's release the Volvo Tiger from its cage. And uh, men, many people really did understood what he meant. But over time, he demonstrated that he had trust in the Volvo team. After becoming China's first multinational automotive group, Geely intended to use the technological expertise of Volvo to reach their own new goal of producing safer, more luxurious and desirable cars throughout the group that appeal to their increasingly aspirational customers, both at home and abroad. But it wasn't just a one-sided relationship, and in 2016, they unveiled this jazzy number, and with it, an all-new brand, Lincoln Co., a joint venture between Geely Auto and Volvo Cars. This young and hip brand is the culmination of many years of collaboration and was the first to use the Geely Group's brand new CMA vehicle architecture, quite literally the foundation on which many of the group's future cars would be built. For Geely, this new brand represented a major milestone in its technological advancement. But it was through their work with the Cyan Racing Team that Lincoln Co. were truly able to show the world the extent of their engineering abilities. <music> Using their best seller, this, the Lincoln Co. 03, Cyan would go on to win three consecutive World Touring Car Championships, including the Team and Drivers' Cup last season. But despite the international recognition, Eric never forgot his roots and paid homage to his hometown by building this epic production facility. Let's go take a look inside. So by building the factory here in Taizhou, yes. how do you think that this has benefited or affected the local area? We are investing in the people's competence. We are training them in lean manufacturing. We are training them in the processes for running such a global company as Volvo Cars. Wow. And what sort of brands are you making here at the moment? We are what we call a CMA, Common Plant, which is the first one between Volvo and Geely. And here we have done Lincoln Co brand, Zero One. We have done the Volvo XC40, we are doing XC40. We are doing the Polestar 2, and we're also doing the XC40 electrical vehicle. This high-tech factory set against the backdrop of Eric Lee's humble hometown is the perfect encapsulation of Geely's journey to this point. And whilst it would make the ideal ending to this story, it also represents a new and challenging plot twist. There is no denying that the automotive industry is facing the biggest shakeup in its history, and the future is, undoubtedly, electric. This facility demonstrates the group's determination to be at the forefront of this revolution. The company's new brand, Zika, which was only unveiled earlier this year, immediately sold out of its first production run. Although, that actually wasn't all that surprising. The brand was deliberately created to fill a much-needed gap in the market. With its first car, the 001, boasting a massive 700 km range, while still retaining the luxury feel and mod cons demanded by the modern consumer. It is just one of the group's ever-growing selection of new energy options as they continue on their mission to a pure electric future. 
With cars like this, it's clear that the future is very much here. But if this story has taught us one thing, it's that to stay ahead in this super competitive industry, you need to think about not just what the consumer needs today, but what we are going to need tomorrow. So what does that mean to the people here? This might sound like an exaggeration, but I assure you, inside these doors, things are already in motion. Not content with simply reimagining the future look of our four-wheeled friends, they just casually founded China's first commercial satellite company, which will pave the way to a fully autonomous future. Add in their investments in a flying car company and an autonomous drone taxi service, and I think it's clear where they see things going. But amidst all this crazy talk of the future, I can't help but cast my mind back to the guy who started it all. I'm not sure that when he founded Geely 35 years ago, he could have ever foreseen what it would become. But one thing's for sure, going from selling photos in small town China to selling 2.1 million cars in a single year, with a few detours along the way, makes for some journey.